I love your work. Thank you. Your work is amazing. It's inspirational. It's beautiful. It's captivating. It's energetic and inspiring. And uh, this this little short documentary that you did on Our Lady Guadalupe was just beautiful. Thank you. And I learned a few things, and I thought I thought I knew most of the things, but yeah. I, I'm, I was learning new things here. So tell me about why you felt inspired to make this film. I did not feel inspired, actually. I did not want to make the film. It wasn't my idea. I actually had said... I have no plans or intentions to going to Mexico. I, I literally just said that, and then Frater Giovanni comes to town, and he's like, I would like to make a Guadalupe documentary. And then I told my assistant, I said, Claire, if this guy's serious, you, you might have to go to Mexico, because I just made a resolution <laughs> yesterday that, to to that I was not going to go to Mexico. But, it, you know, mothers have a way of getting their children to do what they want them to do. Yeah. And then within 24 hours, Frater Giovanni and I not only had plans to go to Mexico, our housing was covered by a very famous Mexican actor. He let us stay at his house. He didn't even know us. A great guy. If you don't know, I'm talking about Eduardo Verostegui. Class act individual. They didn't even know, you know, who's Gabi, who's this Giovanni. He just let us stay at his house and had a, a driver come and pick us up at the airport. How wonderful. Uh, and then our flights were paid for by another friend of Frater Giovanni. I noticed that because he wears that white habit, he can pretty much ask and he shall receive. <laughs> so that's the trick. I need that's a guy the trick. In a no, white no habit joke. Asking. We went to yeah. breakfast one time and people were just giving him money. And I was like, I need a white habit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to be religious. I'm just going to dress like one. Right, yeah. He told me that wasn't allowed. It's so, <laughs> somehow it's not seriously. allowed. Yeah. But I was converted deeply by yeah. the message of Our Lady of Guadalupe. And it wasn't the tilma that converted me, actually, although there's great scientific uh, evidence, and we're going to talk about that. But it's what the tilma points to. And it's the words of Our Lady that Rudy read earlier. And the message of Guadalupe, in short, is that Mary is our mother. Mm -hmm. That's and, and, and we hear that, and we believe that, we accept that with faith, but we don't act like it. And that's the message of Guadalupe. Act like it. We insult God. We insult the mother of God when we worry, when we stress, when we have anxiety, when we have doubt. At Guadalupe, Mary goes to Juan Diego and calls him by his name before she even knew him, but well, before he knew her. Yeah. And she calls him my little one, my son, my beloved. And that's how Mary speaks to all of us. And she asks Juan Diego to go to the bishop, go to him, tell him, I want a temple because I am the mother of all of these people. Hmm. And the last thing in the, the fourth apparition, she tells him, I'm not going to read it word for word, but hear me and understand well, my little son, that nothing should frighten you. Nothing should grieve you. And then the last thing she says, do not grieve nor be disturbed by anything. In the Catholic faith, we have Jesus really present in the Eucharist. He does that because he loves us. He died on the cross because he loves us. Everything he does, he gave us a mother because he loves us. He not only takes care of us in the spiritual order, but also in the natural order. And we see throughout the Gospels that our Lord blesses those who are confident. The majority of the miracles that Jesus works, he worked them for those who had extraordinary confidence in him. When the lame man was brought through the roof of somebody else's house, that lame man not, might not have had the confidence, but his friends who ripped the roof off of somebody's house, those people had heroic confidence. And Our Lady is saying, stop worrying. The, the act of not worrying is an act of faith. So before there's any miracle, before there's any divine intervention, there has to be faith present. And Our Lady saying the very act of not stressing out, entrusting those cares to me, who am your mother, my eyes are always upon you, that is an act of faith. And we forget that for Mary, when Mary came to our, as Our Lady of Guadalupe, she came as a pregnant mother, not just bearing the Christ child, but bearing us who are the members of the body of Christ. And a biological woman who has a child, her breasts fill up with milk. And when she cannot feed that child, her breasts hurt. It hurts a woman to not be able to feed her children. And so Our Lady's coming to us and saying, don't cause me pain by not allowing me to give you the sweet consolation of my milk. And she asked Juan Diego, go to the bishop, have a temple built here so that these people can experience my clemency and my compassion that she has for the natives and all of those who seek her. And so it's important also to remember that as we discussed the Aztecs and the brutality that they practiced and then uh, gave to the Spanish, Mary came to be their mother too. Yeah. She came to save them, to say there's a new way, there's a, a one true God, and you don't have to kill each other and mm. you know worship the devil. 
I'm the one who crushes the head of the serpent. So that's the main message. There's a lot of scientific, uh, extraordinary stories behind the Tilma, which we'll now get into. But the key is this exists as a reminder. Stop worrying. The mother of God is our very mother, and she takes her vocation as mother so seriously mm -hmm. that her entire dignity is wrapped up upon her being our mother. She, When she, the Virgin Mary looks at us, she looks at us with the love that she has for Christ. Yeah. Because for her to call us my son, it cost her her son. So she takes her mothering us extraordinarily seriously. And because she's a mediatrix of all grace, Every grace we receive from God comes through her. Her eyes are always, always, always upon us. Mm -hmm. They're always upon us. And she shows that to us in the tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe. So the miraculous image came forth when Juan Diego goes to the bishop. He has a tilma full of roses. He thought that that was the sign that God was going to provide. When he unfurls the tilma... Not only do the roses hit the floor, Castilian roses. My last name is Castilia, so I like, I like that little <laughs> detail. <laughs> and the roses hit the floor, but more miraculously, a divine image, which science to this day cannot explain, appears on the tilma. And I mentioned that the eyes of Our Lady are always with us. She has a special emphasis on her eyes that only modern science has been able to reveal. Yeah, it's so amazing. when ophthalmologists put an ophthalmoscope to the eyes of the virgin of the tilma they the eyes reflect light the same way that human eyes would reflect light and when it's put under a microscope even though the eyes of our lady in this image are like not even a you know five sixteenths of an inch mm. you can see in them the exact scene that happened from Our Lady's perspective, when Juan Diego opens his tilma, you can see a bishop, you can see the bishop's assistants, you can see the reflection of Juan Diego, you can see a human family. And so Our Lady is saying that she not only has in her eyes the Catholic Church, the bishops, the priests, but she has in her eye the human family, and most importantly, each one of our families. So the tilma itself, you could start from just the very fibers that it's implanted upon. The tilma is a work garment for workers, and it was only intended to last because it was made out of agave. Normally, it would only last 50 years. This tilma of Our Lady of Guadalupe has not had any treatment done on it, and it's lasted almost 500 years. And been uh, subjected to all kinds of abuse. That's right, because when the, the people first received it, they're like venerating this thing rightly as a relic, and they did not think to put this in glass. They did not think to, you know, treat this. This is a, yeah. they, they saw it as a miraculous sign. They were touching, uh, touching it. Replicas to it all the time. Yeah, they were nonstop the touching it. Yes, people, would, people yeah. would come and touch it for healings and intercessions sessions. Hold that thought. Gabriel Castillo, unfortunately, doesn't have a lot to say on this subject. There are, I think uh, you were saying a minute ago, there are lots of things you learned along the way. Yes. To include things that people talk about all the time, but that may not be true. Right. That was a difficulty I had when making the documentary because there's a lot of things that are extraordinary. So for example, I mentioned that the agave is 500 years old. There was a bomb that was set off by Freemasons and after the explosion, even the brass crucifix on the altar, which we show in the documentary, was completely bent over backwards, and the tilma was un unharmed. So that's extraordinary, and, and we'll go through some more extraordinary things, but there's a lot of untrue things that try to make the tilma out to be uh, alive, and maybe those claims, I don't know where they originated, but there's no scientific backing behind them. So in our documentary, we only included items that had been substantiated by scientists with PhDs who you can go back and say, this doctor from this university examined the tilma and said this. So some of the uh, false ones are that a gynecologist from Mexico was putting the stethoscope on the tilma and he heard a heartbeat over the womb. I, I don't know why a gynecologist would be examining this uh, sacred image, how he would have access to this <laughs> sacred image. Uh, I, let me see that tilma. Why, sir? I'm a gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, then right this way. <laughs> but there is yeah. some truth to a gynecologist making claims about the tilma. So I there's see. a guy named Castillo, who's a doctor, who's a gynecologist in Mexico, mm -hmm. who said that based on her proportions, from what he could see, she's obviously a pregnant woman and that she would be delivered around December 25th, really? which, which would coincide with the December 12th apparition, which coincides with Christmas and a lot of our other feast days that happen to be amazing. 
correct and that we've you know backed up with various other historical and uh, yeah scientific research. Yeah, you know that's interesting because the December the twenty fifth things always gets always gets lambasted every year right. by certain Protestants, right. uh, very fundamentalist Protestants, who will try to say, "Oh, that's so totally made up," right. and yet there's incredible historic uh, yes. evidence that we could pull out and say, "Actually, not so much." It, it all kind of adds up, and, and, and they do that using using the stars. And actually, one of the things that surprised me the most, and this is a characteristic of Our Lady. So there's two things you should always look at when you're reading apparitions or learning about church approved apparitions is that the words of the Virgin Mary, they're not sacred scripture, but they carry with them a profound depth, and the Holy Spirit kind of works with them in a way yeah. that you could do Lexio Divina with. On top of that, the hand of Mary, when she does anything, because she's perfect, she's, you know, Our Lady seat of wisdom, she's the spouse of the Holy Spirit. When Our Lady does something, she always, it's not just for one end. Our Lady makes one action work for several ends. So example, in the Tilma, it was applied to the Aztecs. It was applied to the Spaniards. It's applied for us today through the modern marvels. So everything on the Tilma has more than one meaning. So for example, the stars on her, her garment, they do represent the stars and the way they were aligned on the night of December 12th, 1531. Absolutely. But on top of that, what we've discovered in modern science is a scientist, I forget the name of his name, put a staff notation from music and found that the stars actually make a beautiful harmony. So the way the stars are aligned, if Juan Diego had received this apparition a few minutes before or a few minutes after, the music would not, it would not, they would not be a very yeah. harmonious sound. So it... Like the fact that there's music hidden in the stars, as well as the stars representing the exact moment when Juan Diego unfurls the tilma, mm. is extraordinary in my opinion. Yeah, that was one of the more surprising things yes. that I learned from your documentary. And we put the music in the documentary. You're listening to it while we're we're discussing it's and showing amazing. that. Yes, it's really really amazing. There's so much, and of course the uh, I, I've known about a lot of these uh, elements, but yes. I don't think I knew about the the music. That was very very fascinating. Another thing that I found pretty surprising was that every, every, every aspect of this image was made for the Aztecs. The way Our Lady's hair is parted, the black cincture that she has around her waist representing that she's pregnant. But I was not aware of the various flowers and their symbolisms to the Aztec people. Mm. So there's a special flower called the Queen Quix flower that's a four petal and it represents the center of the universe, the the origins of the cosmos. And on her garment, so, so if the Aztecs were to see this symbol, they'd go crazy. They'd be like, wow, what is this? And so over her womb, there's the Queen Quicks flower, which showed to the Aztec people that this pregnant woman had the center of the universe inside of her womb. Wow. And when you put the Queen Quicks flower, if you're gonna lay this over the topography of Mexico, if you put the Queen Quicks flower over the spot of Mexico City, where the apparition would have happened, all the other flowers align with various mountains, volcanoes, and hills in that region. That's amazing. So it's it's absolutely incredible. You know, um, I am pretty passionate about this yes. particular subject. I'm very passionate about Hernan Cortez. Uh, I would I would sell my home and and make a documentary yes. film on him alone if it wouldn't if it didn't mean my family would be homeless. But uh, nonetheless, I feel like the you know it's so important as Catholics, no matter where we live, but especially as Catholics in America, we should be paying attention to what goes on in Mexico. Yes, because Our Lady was so determined, and uh, you know her uh, Hernan played almost like a John the Baptist for her. Yes, he made straight the path. So that she could show up just a few years later, yes. really, mm -hmm. and uh, convert millions of, of these people because that's how much she loved them, that she would save them from Satan himself. And it seems Satan is determined to, to take back this country from her. Yes, and she's the star of the new evangelization. And I think that's why there's some false information that the devil tries to throw at her so that people can hear something false and be like, that's unsubstantiated or that's a, a cult that's gone too, too far. So, for example, another false thing that is out there is that the pigments hover over the tilma and that the eyes will shift around and open and close and look at people and that the body temperature or the temperature of the tilma is 98.6 degrees. As amazing as that would be, we don't need to make up things that are unsubstantiated. If they measure the temperature and that happens to be true, amazing, great. 
but that just hasn't been not a documentation. It's not documented. But but what has been documented is that the pigments, we don't know where they came from. Like, so there's no animal or mineral or paint. The entire image has no paint strokes on it. Yeah. It's as if it just appeared in a single act. And, and that's incredible. This is an image, the, the, a photograph, so to speak, of the Virgin Mary. And I think every single home should have this picture in their house yeah. as a reminder to them, not only of the great scientific anomalies, but as a reminder to them, Jesus is in that womb and I'm a member of body, the body of Christ. I am in that womb and Our Lady loves me with the love that she has for him. If she comforted him and clothed him and fed him, mm. she's going to do the same for me because she loves me with that same zealous love of a mother and her child. And, you know, all of this points to bringing two cultures together yes, for a powerful reason. Uh, I like the iridescent qualities. You know, you yes. get closer, she looks one way. You get further yes. away, she looks a different way. So either more Spanish or more Aztec, depending yes. on your distance to And that shows the also, Dilma. and Our Lady does this all over the world, she will appear to the culture at that time. And so because you had the Aztecs and the Spaniards in this great conflict, Our Lady appeared as a woman who was mixed race, half Spanish and half Aztec. And so this was her way of saying, I'm here to bring two cultures together. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to make this work. Uh, she's the star of the new evangelization. All conversion is, an, is from grace, and grace only is received through prayer and through sacrifice. And so all of our evangelization efforts need to be under the patronage of the Virgin Mary, because where Mary is, the yeah. Holy Spirit will be. And where the Holy Spirit is, conversion is. Yeah. Very important. We need to embrace Our Lady Guadalupe. Yes. In definitely. a very powerful way. Definitely. I went to a mass last night and the, the church was full. It was midnight. And so I, you know, it was my little cross to get up here uh, <laughs> five, whatever time I got here. Wow. That's and, lazy uh, sleeping in. Yeah, you? I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> but it was so beautiful to see the passion and the zealousness of the Mexican people. The priest was saying, Our Lady chose to be in Mexico and to remain there and her image is there. And... Yes, we, we need to embrace this because although it happened in Mexico, the message is for all of us, mm -hmm. absolutely for all of us. Yeah, but and look at the the war, though. The war is raging for souls in Mexico. Yes, it is. Santa Muerte is the photo yes, it negative. Is. It's the yes, opposite it is. end of the spectrum. Yes. It is a mockery of Our Lady. Yes. And the devil is uh, he's, he's winning some major victories right now in Mexico. Yes, he is. And so we should utilize the Virgin of Guadalupe and our Mexican brothers and sisters remind them because she's a national treasure. When I went to film the documentary there, they did not want me filming. The, the federal government said, you don't have federal permission to be filming. So I had to put away my fancy camera and half the documentary, although it still looks amazing, was, <laughs> fil was filmed on my iPhone. Really? Yeah. It's the, the whole second, the whole ending where Friday Giovanni's going over the messages about how Our Lady's going to be your consolation, et cetera. Yeah. They had said, if we see that camera again, we're going to take it from you. Oh, wow. Yeah, we're, ta we're going to take away the footage. You don't have permission to be filming here. That with your regular camera or your iPhone? No, so I, with my professional camera. Okay. Because we filmed the introduction and the conclusion there on location, and I just used movie magic to make the rest <laughs> look like we filmed it there. Yeah. And so I, at that point, I was like, all right, here we go, iPhone, let's do this. Let's do this thing. You got so, an iPhone Pro? Uh, but yeah, I had the 13, okay, well, that 13 helps. at the time. That yeah. helps anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's insane, isn't it? Um that more people don't really know the depth and richness of the story of Our Lady Guadalupe. Yes. That um, it's sort of she sort of gets relegated to you know well that's for the Mexicans right yeah you I, know that's no, for the Hispanics. Not. I it's was not for us, but this I was is, surprised. But she did this yeah. for us. This she is, did this for us, but I was surprised I mean, at how few how few other religions. I'm not how few other religions. How few other nations were present at the basilica? I went one day and there's footage there. It's completely packed to the gills. Yeah. And all Mexicans. I didn't see any white skinned people except for me. That's horrible. Yeah. That's really horrible. Um, I would love to make Our Lady of Guadalupe much better known in the world. And I think you're doing that with your with your documentary film and your YouTube channel because so many people uh, check this stuff out. And they find you because it's such good quality. It's Thank so you. beautifully done and so inspirational. And uh, and I know a lot of non-Catholics uh, embrace your content as well. So. You're planting many seeds, my friend. Yeah, well, thank you. And we plan on making more documentaries on Our Lady. We've got, we already have one on Our Lady of Lourdes. Um, we have one coming out on Our Lady of Good Help. But nice. another surprising thing is just how much the message overlaps. Yeah. Prayer and penance. 
absolutely in confidence, confidence, confidence yeah. in the mother of God and her love for you. Yeah, I love that latest video on confidence. It was great. Yes, thank you. Gabriel Castillo, God bless you, my God friend. God bless you. Uh, Gabby May After Hours, you. check him out on YouTube. Praise be to God. you got to watch this. You're going to love it. Share it with a friend, too, while you're at it. Hey, listen, that's going to do it for hour number one. Tito Edwards from BigPulpit.com is going to be on with us in the second hour. Love to have you there if you can. Hang out with us online. GRNonline.com forward slash CDT. Otherwise, we'll see you back here tomorrow morning. God bless you. God love you. We'll see you then.